Linux application programming uh, is the title of our training. Uh, this is session one, Unix or Linux history. What is the agenda of the session? What you will know after the session? Unix history, Richard Stallman and uh, GNU movement, Linus Benedict Torvald and the kernel. So these are the three main topics in this program. If you see, uh, Linus Benedict Torvald is one person who developed the kernel. But the project started way before him. You know, uh, he developed the kernel in 1991. But before that, a lot of things uh, already happened. And it started in late 60s, if you go back to the history. So, Unix history, if you look at, it existed for over 50 years in one of the most flexible and powerful operating system. When I say most flexible and powerful, I will give examples. If I ask you who have worked on Windows 3.5 or Windows 95, probably a few or rarely any of you. But if I say that who worked on Unix in 1993-94 and are using the same set of commands even today, probably if any of you were there at the time, you will say yes. I use the same command because ls command, org programming, uh, scd, all these things we use way back then and we use today. So it is a powerful operating system uh, being there for over 50 years. The goals for Unix were to provide a multitasking and multi-user operating system that supported application portability. Yes, actually it started with the uh, PDP-7, the machine, and uh, this AT&T Bell Labs, uh, they, uh, you know, uh, thought that let's, let's write a multi-processing or multi-user operating system. They joined hand together, three companies came together and they started that project uh, in 1965-66 and uh, then within two, three years all were out with the mindset the, because the operating system was ready but that could overload uh, with only three users. So and the cost was very high of that operating system. This tradition of uh, multitasking, multi-user operating system has continued in all Unix variants and given the new perspective of operating system portability, it continues to evolve and grow. Now the timeline, how the major uh, milestones in the history of uh, Linux uh, or Unix and uh, GNU. Uh, GNU is recursive form like if you say it is GNU is not Unix that that is a full form of GNU it is a recursive full form GNU is not Unix so that is the timeline if we look at the major developments Richard uh, Richie and Thompson they created uh, this uh, Unix first version in 1969 uh, at AT&T so that was AT&T Unix, way back in 1969, that was the first milestone. In 1971, first version of uh, Unix was out and that was written in B language, which was uh, before C, the language was B. So that was first version written in B language in 1971. In 72, Unix version 2 was out, that was written in C language. 76, BSD releases, uh, BSD version of Unix was released, that was Bakley Software Distribution uh, was released in 1976. In 1978, Unix timesharing system 5 was launched. 1982, AT&T's first commercial Unix system was uh, launched, was uh, you know out. 1983, Richard Stallman started the project called uh, GNU Open Source Foundation, Free Software Foundation, FSF. 1985, 
Richard Stallman create the FSF that is Free Software Foundation. So 83, 1885 were major developments. In 1987, Andy Tenbaum uh, creates a mini operating system. 1988, Richard Stallman create the general public license, uh, that is GPL. 1991, Linus Benedict Torvald create uh, Linux for i386, that was a machine available, and the operating system at that time was uh, uh, Minix. So he working on the kernel of Minix to come out with something what was known as Linux. In 1992, Linux or Linux licensed under the GPL in 1992. This was the major timeline and the development in the history for the purpose of just a storytelling uh, what were the major timeline and milestones in the history in the development of Unix or Linux. AT&T Unix. Unix begin as a small research project at AT&T's Bell Labs in 1969 for this machine PDP-7, DEC PDP-7. Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson designed and built Unix as a way to replace the Multics operating system already in use. Once Multics was withdrawn at at and Thompson and Ritchie developed Unix on the PDP-7 in order to play a game, a space travel, which was a popular game at the time. The first useful for, uh, version of Unix, version was, was introduced in 1971 and it was written in the B language, that is a precursor of C language. It hosted a small number of commands, many of which are still available, like cat command, cp command, ls command, who command, all these commands were there at that time in 1971 as well. In 1972, Unix was rewritten in C language. 1979, the Bond shell was introduced. The BSD, Bakeley Software Distribution. This operating system was created as a fork of Unix at University of California at Berkeley in 1976. BSD is a strong competitor of GNU Linux and in some way it is superior. Many innovations are created in, were created in BSD including the sockets network programming paradigm and the variety of IPC mechanism and they are still used in uh, Linux for that. Many of uh, the use of, uh, useful applications which were created in uh, GNU Linux have their roots in the BSD. For example, VI editor and the uh, term cap. The term cap is a terminal capability database were created by Bill Choi at Berkeley in 1978. They are still used in, uh, in use in uh, GNU Linux. GNU Linux history. Richard Stallman created an organization to build a Unix-like operating system. He had tools, compiler, and a variety of applications but he lacked a kernel. Linus Torvalds had a kernel but no tools or applications for which to make it useful. So why we use the term GNU Linux? The answer is already there in first three lines now. Linux refer to kernel developed by Linus Torvalds at age of 21. The remaining software, the shell, compiler, tool chain, compiler tool chain, utilities and tools, and this uh, all applications, plethora of uh, applications were above, they operate above the kernel, much of the software is a GNU software. In fact, the source code that makes up the GNU Linux operating system dwarfs that of the kernel. 
so actually uh, you cannot say it is uh, linus himself created the entire linux no the story began in 83 85 with the creation of the compiler tool chain free software foundation fsf and all that by uh, richard stallman so that's the region we need to refer to as uh, gnu linux rather than simply linux therefore to call the entire operating system linux is definitely is a misnomer to say at least gnu and the free software foundation richard stallman posted to the net unix wizard user net group soliciting help in the development of free unix compatible operating system in 1983 Stallman vision was the development of a free as in freedom unix like operating system whose source code was open and available to anyone even in 70s stallman was no stranger to open source he wrote the emacs editor in 76 and gave the source away to anyone who would send a tape on which the copy of the source and the return envelope gnu and the software foundation again fsf the impetus of stallman to create a free operating system was the fact that modern computer required a proprietary operating system to do anything useful at the time these operating system were closed very important term here closed source software open source software like a car with your bonnet sealed you can drive it but you cannot see what is happening inside it you cannot open the bonnet you cannot see the engine microsoft is a closed software source software you cannot see the source code but you can work with it many operating systems at the time were closed and not modifiable by the end user they were usable but not modifiable in fact until very recently it was impossible to buy a pc from a major supplier without having to buy the windows operating system on it but through the F free software foundation stallman collected hundreds of programmers around the world to help take on the task by 1991 stallman had pulled together many of the elements of a useful operating system this included a compiler a shell and a variety of tools and applications but again the kernel still missing work was underway in 1986 to migrate mit's trix kernel trix kernel but divisions existed on whether to use trix trix or cmu's mash micro kernel we'll talk about these different type of kernels we have a session coming up that is next session is architecture of linux we'll discuss these type of kernels in the next lecture It was not until 1990 that work began on the official GNU project kernel. Our story left off with the development of an operating system by Free Software Foundation, but the development issues existed with a kernel that would make it complete. In an odd twist to the fate, a young programmer by the name of Linus Benedict Torvald announced the development of a hobby operating system for i386 based computers. Torvald wanted to improve the Minix operating system that was available at that time and thought a monolithic kernel would be much faster than a micro kernel that uh, Minix uses used at that time. while this was commonly delivered to be true believed to be true operating systems such as uh, carnegie mellon's uh, mash and other provides uh, evidence to the contrary 
Torvald released his first version of Linux, that is 0.01 in 1991, and then later in the year he released version 0.11, which was a self-hosted release. Torvalds used the freely available GNU tools such as compilers and the bash shell for his effort. Much like Thompson and Ritchie first Unix more than 20 years earlier, it was a minimal and not entirely useful in 1992 Linux.96 which supported the X window system was released. That year also marked Linux, uh, Linux as GNU software component. Linux, much like GNU movement, encompassed not just one person, but hundreds and thousands of developers. While Torvalds remained one of the top maintainers of Linux, the scope of this monolithic kernel had grown well beyond the scope of one person. So it is important to note why released minor versions are all even. If you see, whenever you see the Linux kernel version, you will see all them in even numbers. The even number represents a stable release and the odd number represents a development version. Since development release are usually unstable, it's a good idea to avoid them for production use. Like first public posting of kernel in 1991, 8 month, 1992.98, 1.2 kernel, right? Then we have 0 0.1.0, 2, 2.2, 2 then 2.6, 2.4. These were the major releases of kernel. If you see, all the numbers are even numbers. Bring it, bringing it all together. The rest, as they say, is history. GNU Linux moved from i386 single CPU operating system to multiprocessor operating system supporting many processor architectures. Today, GNU can be found in large supercomputers, small handheld devices, it runs on x86 family, ARM, PowerPC and all to name of a few. But even this, with this achievement, BSD still garners the most architectures supported. GNU Linux has evolved from its humble beginning to be one of the most scalable, secure, reliable and highest performing operating system available. GNU Linux when compared to Windows is less likely to be exploited by hackers. Linux distributions because the source code was available in early days running a GNU Linux operating system was anything but simple. Users sometimes had to modify the kernel and drivers in order to get the operating system on boot, operating system to boot. Today, GNU distributions provide a simple way to load the operating system and selectively load the uh, plethora of the tools and uh, applications. Given the dynamic nature of the kernel and loadable modules, it's simple to configure the operating system dynamically and automatically to make advantage of peripherals that are available. Projects such as Debian and companies such as Red Hat and SUSE introduced distributions that contains the GNU Linux operating system and pre-compiled programs on which to use it. In fact, most distributions typically include over 10,000 packages with the kernel making it easy to get what you need. Summary is what? The history of GNU Linux is a story of frustration. Yes, remember this word. Why it is a story of frustration? 
it started uh, in 1968-69 only. That was also because of some frustration. Thompson and Ritchie designed the original Unix as a way to replace the existing Multics operating system, which was frustrating at the time. Richard Stallman created GNU and FSF as a way to create free operating system, free operating system that anyone could use free of proprietary licenses. Because proprietary licenses were uh, available at the time and no operating system was available free. Linus Torvald created Linux out of frustration with the Minix operating system that was used primarily as educational tools at the time. Whatever their motivations, they and countless others around the world succeeded in the way that no one at that time would have ever believed. That is a history of Linux.